I ask unanimous consent to speak as if in morning business for five minutes. Without objection, so ordered. But first, I just want to take one minute to, while my friend from Oklahoma is still here, I heard his eloquent speech, uh, if I may have his attention, uh, I heard his eloquent speech against retroactivity. I happen to think it is not sound policy, though I think on balance the, the budget reconciliation bill is needed by the nation, and I'm going to vote for it. But I don't remember the senator from Oklahoma or the minority leader speaking against retroactivity when we had the 1986 tax bill up. I was one of three to vote against that 1986 tax bill. Uh, I, I, that side was audibly silent when it came to that issue in the 1986 tax bill. And uh, uh, since I just ha have five minutes here, I'm, I, I'm going to take my five minutes and then, I'm, and then I, I'll let the senator from Oklahoma get the floor. Well, I'd be happy for the senator to have more time. I might mention I voted against the 86 tax bill as well. And, and uh, if, if there were taxes in 86 that were retroactive, certainly that was wrong. Well, it, it was a major feature of that bill. Mr. President, immediately I want to introduce a bill, the School to Work Opportunities Bill, in behalf of uh, myself and Senator Kennedy, Senator Jernberger, Senator Wofford, Senator Pell, Senator Metzenbaum, Senator Dodd, Senator Hatfield, Senator Mosley Braun, Senator Bro, and Senator Murray. And I would like to just comment very briefly. First, I am pleased to have those co-sponsors, and I particularly want to commend Senator Kennedy, who has not only been the chair of our committee, but has been a real leader in the United States Senate on education matters and on all matters of social policy. Uh, I am proud to serve with him here. I also want to uh, enter into the record, uh, ask unanimous consent, to enter into the record a statement by Senator Durenberger in support of this. I'm, Without objection, so ordered. I'm grateful for his support, and it is an area that Senator Wofford also has worked very hard on. We spend a great deal of money on seeing that people have college opportunities. So these pages here and others will have college opportunities, and properly so. It is a great investment in our future. But three-fourths of those who go to high school are not going to graduate from college, and we ought to be providing opportunity for them. We're the only industrialized nation in the world that does not have a coherent, comprehensive system for preparing its young people for work. What we have to do is to create school-to-work opportunities. What we have to do is to see that people have high skills. We're living in a world where the demand for high skills is going up, where the demand for low skills or no skills is going down. And that trend will continue but our education system, frankly, doesn't reflect that as it should. One of our co-sponsors is Senator Hatfield. The state of Oregon has done a great deal in this uh, field. And during the last campaign, President Clinton talked a great deal about, and I'm quoting now, bringing business, labor, and education leaders together to develop a national apprenticeship-style program that offers non-college-bound students valuable skills training with the promise of good jobs when they graduate. That's what this is all about, having a work-based learning situation where you work together with business to create opportunities. I would like to enter into the record a, a letter from the Secretary of Labor and the Secretary of Education uh, in endorsing this concept and this bill. Without objection, so ordered. And I would point out that this already, even though it's just being introduced, has been endorsed by the American Federation of Teachers, the National Alliance of Business, and I am sure will be endorsed by the National Education Association and others. It gives states flexibility, but it encourages movement, and it does it for a relatively small price tag, a $300 million price tag the first year and such sums 
uh, as may be needed after that. Uh, it, it sets up programs that some places have already started. I have visited such programs in Pennsylvania and New York. Uh, I have not visited the Oregon programs, but this is the direction that we're going to have to go in the field of education, and I'm pleased that uh, uh, to introduce this bill and to have bipartisan sponsorship on it. Mr. President, I would like, if my five minutes is used up, to proceed to the business at hand, just very briefly. The uh, nomination of Dr. Elders for Surgeon General of the United States. I wish all of our colleagues could have been here on the floor last night when Senator Kennedy and Senator Mikulski spoke about Dr. Elders' background. One of eight children growing up in a three-room house, she did not see a physician until she was a freshman in college. She recalls that on two occasions when her mother had complicated uh, childbirth experiences and uh, they had no medical attention for any of those eight children. They were born in their home. She tells about when her brother was four years old and had a ruptured appendix and was taken in great pain by a mule ten miles to a physician. But more than that, that dramatic background is uh, I sensed uh, in her a, a forthrightness that I think will be great as Surgeon General. It reminds me of Surgeon General Coop, frankly. Uh, and uh, I think she will perform a great service for the nation. I don't expect I'm going to agree with her all the time. I don't expect Senator Kennedy will or Senator Nichols or uh, Senator Feingold or, or anyone else here is going to agree. But she will be forthright. And I was pleased to see the letter from our two colleagues from Arkansas, Senator Bumpers and Senator Pryor, strongly endorsing her nomination. Let me add one other point that I learned last night in the course of the discussion on Dr. Elders. She went to college and became a physician, and an outstanding physician, because the United Methodist Church had a scholarship for her and made it possible. A church group reached out and said, we're going to have to make opportunities for people, and grabbed this young lady of great mind, but hardly any resources, and made an opportunity for her. I don't happen to be a Methodist, but I think when churches and synagogues and mosques and whatever the religious affiliation or whatever the charitable organization, when they reach out and make sure that we have opportunities for talented people, they do a great service to the nation. So Dr. Elder's nomination is not only a tribute to her parents and to her ability and uh, to her family, it is a tribute also, frankly, to the United Methodist Church. And I have the, haven't the foggiest idea who may have seen that opportunity and seen what potential this fine young woman had to make her a great physician. The nation is going to be benefited by that. I'm pleased to support her nomination. Mr. President. Mr. President. From Arkansas.